Glad to have you back from that short break. Our next report looks at the journey of an executive bill that has generated much discussion among Nigerians. The bill seeking emergency powers for the president. Lawmakers of the 8th House of Representatives at the first plenary session of the House after their annual recess. One of the issues the lawmakers are expected to focus on is a proposed executive bill seeking emergency powers for President Muhammad Buhari, a proposal that has generated much discussion among Nigerians. But it appears the bill is yet to reach the lawmakers. Immediately the speaker receives it, uh, it will be passed on to my office. For now, I, 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 it has not yet arrived. Yeah, so by immediately we get it, it will spring into action. Other lawmakers say if such a bill is presented, it will be considered carefully. It depends on the content of the emergency power. If it's in tune with uh, what we think will just propel the economy without compromising uh, the, the ideals of the parliament. Oh, definitely. I, so I see this parliament as a parliament that we definitely yield to anything that will bring succor to our people. If there are resistors are there, our duty is to look at it, look at the pros and cons and see what we have to do as a, as a parliament. We will know we'll do the need for. Now, what powers does he want? What more powers does he want? He's the commander in chief, he's the chief executive officer, he's, he's the head of, head of state, he's everything you can think of. So I, to my mind, I don't think he requires any more powers. What he needs to do is to work extra hard. Most of the lawmakers agree that the country needs to take active steps to revive the economy. But it's not clear if this bill will be sent to the National Assembly or if sent, whether it will be passed by the National Assembly. Up next is a look at some motions and issues brought up by some of the lawmakers. Federal lawmaker Senator Dino Milaye is alleging that South African telecommunications giant MTN has repatriated illegally the sum of 24 billion naira from Nigeria. Raising a point of order at Thursday's legislative proceedings, Senator Milaye alleged that MTN connived with some powerful Nigerians to execute the deal. He disclosed that four banks were also involved. Senator Malaya requested the Senate to allow him raise a proper and thorough motion on the matter. The motion is expected to be raised on Tuesday, September the 27th. My respected colleagues, MTN Nigeria, MTN paid the sum of 284 million, 0.9 million dollars on the 6th of February 20, 2001 to purchase their license of operation in this country. I want to say with facts, which by the grace of God will be made available on the next legislative day if this motion is allowed, to all senators to see evidence that between 2006 and 2016, through four Nigerian banks, and indeed a serving minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and some other fraudulent Nigerians, MTN have moved over 12 billion dollars out of Nigeria and that is about half that is about half of our external reserve if I get the nod of the Senate I want to bring a substantive motion on Tuesday the next legislative day to with substantiated facts to buttress this uh, position former Plateau state governor Senator Joshua Darie has defected from the People's Democratic Party the PDP to the ruling all progressives Congress APC Senate President Bukola Saraki announced Senator Darie's defection at the end of Thursday's legislative proceedings. In the letter, Senator Darie explained that his decision to leave the PDP for the APC is to join his supporters who he stated have massively left the PDP because of the protracted crisis in the PDP's national headquarters. After due consultation with my consultancy, I write to notify you of my intention to cross over from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressive Congress. My decision is informed by the protracted division at the national level of the PDP that led to the massive movement of my supporters to APC. Arising from this, I therefore write to formally inform you of my decision to go along with my supporters. 
A lawmaker in the House of Representatives has called for a museum to be built around the site of the first commercial oil discovery in Oloibiri, Ogbia local government area of Bayelsa State, to mark the discovery made there 60 years ago. The lawmaker representing the constituency says it's necessary for the country to celebrate the discovery as it's a significant part of the Nigerian story. She also asked that an oil and gas research center be built in the area. The lawmaker touched on the need for the federal government to address the lack of infrastructural development in the Niger Delta as a means of addressing the agitation in the region. As lawmakers, I've been able to present a bill to the, to the house, to the, on the floor of the house, about oil and gas museum and research center at Olebri. I believe that Nigerians will support it that such a monument should be left behind. Everybody is talking about oil is going. So what will we use in commemorating to remember our children's children? That is why I made sure that this bill, the bill is on the floor, the house is on, it has passed second reading. The third stage is coming up where we need a public input. Well, I can tell you that the House Committee on Ethics and Privileges has commenced its investigation into the breach of privileges of the House. The committee met with Representative Emmanuel O.K. Jeff, who moved the motion. Interesting development there, and I believe we have not heard the last on this matter. But we'll still be monitoring the situation to see how it pans out. Anyway, it's at this point that we conclude the show for today. I'm Lanre Lassese. Thanks for being there and take care.